All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God.
Well, it's going to be a busy weekend. Hundreds of members of the Satanic Temple will be in Boston this weekend for a convention. And as WBZ's Anna Myler tells us, some are not thrilled by that. The sold-out event is starting today, and it's happening all weekend here at the Marriott in Boston. And a counter-event is planned in response. People are arriving in Boston from all over to attend what's expected to be the largest satanic gathering in history. It's about supporting human rights. It's about supporting women's bodily autonomy. It's about freedom of religion, freedom from religion. The event marks the 10-year anniversary for the Satanic Temple and will include satanic rituals, entertainment, and discussion panels. I understand the confusion, the fear. I, I really do, but at the same time, we're a very misunderstood group. Organizers are dedicating Satan Con to Boston Mayor Michelle Wu because the group was not allowed to deliver a satanic invocation at City Hall last last year. The mayor's office says neither Mayor Wu nor the city of Boston are sponsoring or affiliated with Satan Con 2023. Mayor Wu will be out of town this weekend. A truck with a Christian Action Network billboard is parked outside the Marriott and a Christian event called Revive Boston is happening this weekend in response. Satan's a deceiver, so anything other than Jesus is not the truth. So I, I feel bad for these people. Organizers with the Satanic Temple say they do not believe in Satan, but rather push for the separation of church and state, and that their mission is to encourage empathy among all. Most don't believe in Satan, not a literal Satan. Um, it's, not, it's not some 1980s horror film. I think it's a little odd, but... Um, they've been very hospitable to people. A woman staying. There. <laughs> uh, let's see. I have a little audio problem here. Uh, getting things working right. I didn't want the mic to be picking up the video so we're gonna look at another video this first of all uh th this gives new meaning to band in boston like not band in boston <laughs> the city where of the puritan city where christmas was forbidden well i guess that goes along with this too but it was because of the puritans that uh you know the puritan city of boston the, the rigid uh by the time of the American Revolution, Puritanism had degenerated into universalism and uh, what was the other thing? Uh, you know, univer uh, universalism and Unitarianism. So they had rejected the Christ of the Bible, the Puritans. By that time, they had gone that far astray in less than 200 years. Doesn't take long. All right, so I want to show another clip. Now, this was this was by CBS uh, of Boston, WBZ. This is a, a cell phone video from participants in it, apparently, of this event, the Satan Con. That's what it is. It's Satan's Con. I'm going to talk about that in a second. So we'll look at this personal uh content provider. Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Okay, now there's the opposition some Catholics have gathered someplace else to counter-protest, or to protest the uh, Satan con. Uh, <clears throat> they should protest the papal con, too, by the way. So let's uh, go back here. Let me talk about uh, this. This is a clown show. This is Satan's false front. It's like the, uh, the Masons being the boogeyman that you... That where the real stuff is someplace else. This is, if you want to see a real temple of Satan, you can look almost any place in the United States. One of the biggest and most impressive ones is the Capitol building in Washington. 
And the White House, not nearly so impressive, though. The Capitol building. Built in pagan Roman style, complete with pagan temples. The Washington Monument, uh, a phallic symbol in the style of, <laughs> except cheaply made, obelisk. Egyptian obelisk. Yeah, uh, pagan symbol, phallic symbol. It's just made out of individual blocks instead of one. Now, the, see, that shows the Egyptians were much mightier. They could make one out of solid granite, whereas the Masons, <laughs> their, their plate is on it, uh, a gift from the French, of course, after their revolution. Yeah, hmm. They could come take that back and the staff. No, wait a minute. No, excuse me. That was the Statue of Liberty. That's another idol, but it's not in Washington, D.C. Uh, yeah, that's the god of liberty, the pagan god of libertas. That has nothing to do with God and Christian liberty at all. Uh, the, the casting off of restraints, the celebration of casting off of restraints. The American Revolution was about casting off the restraints of the King of England. Uh, the King of England was crimping the uh, desires, was restraining the desires of uh, wealthy colonists to, to, and others to seize uh, Indian lands, which were also subjects of the king, and he was actually protecting them regarded them as his subjects also. And, of course, the, uh, the commercial interests, the, uh, the laws of England were, you had to conduct uh, merchant trade by sea according to their system. And without that, yeah, and pay taxes, pittance of taxes on things like tea and whatever to support the, the expense of stationing British troops to defend the colonists from the Indians, they were constantly trying to cheat. And that has, humanity is just ugly. It's just ugly. The, the real history of humanity and the United States is just ugly. Now, the, the, the history of the American, England, in, uh, American Indians is just uh, is ugly, too. Uh, they were in utter darkness. But the, the difference between the American Indians and the colonists is the colonists had the light rejected it they they turned they, they did not submit themselves to the word of god they would pretend to they'd put on a display but they wouldn't really do it so this is these aren't the pagans here in the picture uh, you know the, 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 these are the the catholics that are counter protesting okay uh back in I can't, it was 1960s, 1970s, I believe, there was a, a Satanist in the United States named Anton LaVey. And he started the first open denomination, satanic denomination in the United States uh, called the Church of Satan. These are simply fronts. These are simply, you know, the a, uh, a boogeyman to, to keep your tr attention away from the real power of Satan, which is focused in... Uh, he prefers religions that call themselves Christian. And he prefers power, the lie, the center of lies and power, which is like the Capitol building. Lawless, lawless. Read the Constitution and tell me the Congress is not completely lawless. I don't care who it is. Even Rand Paul, uh, who knows better, does. he goes with the flow, too quite a bit. Nor does he uh, publicly proclaim the lordship of Jesus Christ. That's not what he's about. A libertarian is a person that wants to be unrestrained by law. Libertarianism is not Christian. It's not. Christians have law, too. Only our law isn't the law of Moses. It's Christ himself in us. All right, so, uh, but it, Anton LaVey created something called the Church of Satan back in the six, late, everything, you know, back to the, the, the heyday of the 60s, late 60s, and the early 70s, uh, Woodstock days, uh, riots in the street days, uh, Chicago 
Democratic convention in 1968 days, uh, days of uh, Mayor Daley and sending the, his police out to beat everybody with a big stick. It was crazy, man. It was crazy. Cities were in, fl in flames, everything. It was nuts. Of course, you had the assassination of, of John F. Kennedy in, what was it, 64, 63? And then uh, the assassination of Martin Luther, well, uh, and Martin Luther King, and I can't remember the exact date, but that was closer to 1968. And at the same time, you had the assassination of Robert Kennedy. It was just chaos. Just nuts. The hippies, the revolutionaries, communists in, on campus, bombing of the ROTC building in the University of Wisconsin, uh, the Black Panthers, uh, the uh, white uh, communist revolutionary groups, Symbionese Liberation Front. It was all over the place. This stuff was just crazy. So it's, I mean, it's, the difference is, that was not the norm and was not the majority. Um, today, it, the government is, the government was seeking to suppress the evil, the lawlessness. Today, they are actively not only accepting it, but mandating it. Mandating the lawless, mandating uh, that people accept the LGBTQ XYZ agenda, that they uh, accept uh, the the chemical mutilation and cast uh, the physical mutilation and chemical castration of children, uh, the the to enforce uh, confusion in children that are that have no way to know what you know a pre uh, pre puberty child. They're, you can't even talk about sexuality. Physically, they have sexuality, but their body hasn't developed to the point where it expresses itself. So you can't even talk about that. And then to, to even try to change something that's not possible to change, physical gender is impossible to change, all you will do is mutilate their bodies. And for the government... To come in, and the government to come in, and it's like uh, the uh, Jordan Peterson, the psychologist that's in so much hot water all the time from Canada. His crime, what started the whole thing off with him, is the Canadian government was government was trying to enforce the use of people's preferred pronouns, and he was rejecting that. Say, I will not say a lie because the government mandates me to lie. If somebody thinks they're a female, but they're obviously a male, they are deceiving themselves. You'd think a psychologist, his duty would be to help them free themselves from their self-deception. Not nowadays. It's amazing how their, their diagnostic book has changed. It used to be homosexual. homosexuality was a disorder. Yeah. 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 So now, now we have a society that, rather than seeking to restrain evil, including divorce and all this stuff, and you know by by uh, f at least frowning on it, now it's just embracing evil. And the Church of Anton Lavey, even though it was never a big thing, and it was just a he uh, Anton Lavey cr uh, created something he called a Satanic Bible. Um, <clears throat> I think I read that one time. But I remember the, the doctrine of the Church of Satan is quite interesting. I don't know if it still exists as an organization or not. These things are usually just, you know, giving God the finger and then they go on to something else. But true Satanism, including human sacrifice, does really exist. But it's not open. It's, it, it exists on the Mexican uh, United States border, definitely. The, the, uh, the drug cartels, the gangs down there and that, uh, routinely practice human sacrifice in order to get the protection of Satan when they go across the border. I'm not saying they all do that, but definitely. And they, they, they engage in overt terrorism, uh, beheading and publicly hanging the bodies of journalists or politicians that seek to oppose them. That's common. And, of course, they control a good swath of America down there. They buy 
uh, the mayors and sheriffs and everybody, Border Patrol, uh, uh, with an offer they can't refuse. Uh, take the money, look the other way, or we will kill your wife and your children while you watch slowly, and then we will slowly kill you. So the last thing you see is us, you know, the mutilation of them and their dead bodies, and then and we'll do it on you. That's the offer you can't ex refuse. It's not just a mob hit. This is brutal torture. This is deliberate terrorism. And our government tolerates it and encourages it and opens the border. The Mexican government has basically surrendered. Uh, they, they were uh, largely at the behest of the United States there was a, the war on drugs. They were they were engaging in a fight against the narco terrorists, and uh, they you couldn't win. What what drives that? The willingness of the Americans to use drugs. They create the demand that drives the the drug. Uh, the American populace is the guilty party here. They create the uh, not that these people aren't guilty, and shouldn't be properly dealt with. If you see somebody coming, wading across the Rio Grande with a weapon, uh, they should be shot. This isn't a court issue. This is invasion. What do you do with pirates? You know, when a boat full of people with weapons is trying to hijack a, uh, a, a, a cargo ship or something else, the proper response is to blow them out of the water. No trial required. You got plenty of witnesses right there. It's obvious what they're doing. That's Americans' ideas of justice is wrong. Doing what's right in the sight of God is what's right. That's what justice is, what's right in the sight of God. Righteousness, same word as justice in the Greek. All right, so here... Enough, of, but Anton LaVey, before, I, otherwise I'm going to forget what I was going to say. The, the, his Church of Satan had one doctrine. Do what thou wilt. In other words, do whatever you want. Don't be restrained. If you want to, to rape or uh, commit adultery or sin or whatever you want, Whatever your flesh desires, do it. Gratify that urge. Fulfill that desire. That's the church of Satan, or was. That was their commandment. To not be restrained. Satan, what, what, did, what did he do? He said, I will set my own will above God. That's what Adam did. Rather than do what God told me, I will do what I think is right, what I want to do. And all his children, same way. We're born without God in our lives, without God's restraint. And there is things God has put in creation and in civilization to restrain the leaven of sin so it doesn't go completely wild. And right now that is removed. Uh, throwing off, as we saw in Psalm 2, the throwing off of the restraints. The, the people and kings and judges of the world prophesied by David, throwing off the cords and shackles of God, the, the handcuffs that restrain their wickedness, that seek to suppress the uncontrolled growth of sin. Well, I think that's straight. Uh, re, and what are they trying to do? Now? You look, you've got Joe Biden. What is he? He's a manifestation of Satan himself. In fact, in one video, he says, you might think I am Satan reincarnated. <laughs> yep, words out of his own mouth. Although Satan, since he... <laughs> Satan hasn't died and come back to life. He's... Obviously, uh, Uncle Joe hasn't read the Bible. Uh, he's a Catholic. Most Catholics have never read the Bible. Most Catholics never read the Bible. 
That's not their authority. The Bible would confuse them. That's why if you read the Bible, you're supposed to do it under the instruction of a priest and carefully pay attention to the notes the Catholic Bibles have in there to clarify the text, lest you get the wrong idea and believe what God says. The Catholic Church has, for centuries has suppressed the Word of God, executed people for reading it or printing it. So is the Church of England. Nowadays, well, it's just like the Church of Satan now, United Methodists, United Methodists, Church of Satan. All the Bible believe all the uh, real Christians in that, or anybody serious about Christ, has is leaving. the the uh, The promotion and public display of of what God calls abominations in this country. Just a couple blocks down the street from me, there's a a couple women that uh, they're not content to to pri to privately practice what they do. They always have a gay flag prominently displayed on the front of their house and other signs advertising Black Lives Matter and other forms of rebellion against God. Yes, Black Lives Matter was, by the way, started... Who were the leaders in the Black Lives Matter movement? I think it was about four lesbians. In case you didn't know that. Rebel, rebels against God. It's a, a life of rebellion because it's contrary to the the manifest will of God that's even displayed physically in our bodies. Certain things are meant to work together and certain things aren't. Otherwise, people are going to have... Obviously, some people can't figure out extension cords. They can't figure out what goes in where. All right? I mean, that's physically... Obvious! Because what happens when they're not used properly? Uh, only death. Only death. It can't produce life. A sexuality is, is invented, is created by God for a purpose. Well, actually, more than one purpose, but uh, the abuse of that can't ever produce life. Only a man and a woman can produce life. And that has to be within a God-ordained covenant, or it's disordered. And they do things like murder their offspring. Because they're not interested in following God. They're interested in following their own will, their own desires. And anything that gets in their way, like God, has to be done away with. That is the man of lawlessness. That is the man of sin that I've been uh, trying to get people to realize that when Paul talks about that in 2 Thessalonians, let me bring up my, okay. When he talks about that here, this is not, at least not primarily, a single individual. He's talking about the, the children of Adam, who was the man of disobedience himself. He's the one who dis, he disobeyed God. He, came, he was lawless in his disobedience. He knew what God required. He knew what God warned him not to do. He knew what the consequence was, and he knowingly violated God's instruction because he chose to. Freely chose to violate the law of God and he died spiritually. He cut himself off and all his descendants off from God. You're not born into Christ. You're born of the flesh, the flesh of Adam, the man who no longer had God in him, with him, because he cut himself off. That's spiritual death. He died spiritually. And the natural death just naturally follows. In his case, it took hundreds of years, but We've worn down since then. So let's go here, Second Thessalonians again. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he, I object strongly, especially to the capitalized he. He who now restrains, except in a generic sort of way, will, will do so until he's taken out of the way. Greek is a gendered language. It is wrong to assume that a 
male pronoun necessarily refers to a male person. Wrong. It is simply uh, a pronoun that refers to a masculine word, which is simply a category of words in Greek. It's the largest category of words, just like Spanish. works the same way as Spanish. Then the lawless one is not there. The lawless will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. When Christ returns with the armies of heaven who just follow him, they don't actually participate in the battle. Uh, it's not necessary. The Lord himself wages war. The Lord himself destroys his enemies. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of God. He is coming in a bad mood if you're on the wrong side. Anger and the chief sin of sinners is rejecting the free gift of God's salvation. Rejecting Christ, the Savior. That's what truly damns you. God can forgive every other sin. But rejecting his salvation, it's impossible to forgive that. You rejected what God has done to save you. Impossible to be saved and do that. Apart from Christ, there is no salvation. No one is saved apart from him. The coming of the lawless one, that's not present in the text, is just inserted to help us understand, supposedly, is according to the working, the energia, uh, the, the activity of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And I want to look closer at this verse because I noticed something this morning uh, as I was looking into this a little bit, which I tend to do. Because uh, you know, I, I can't expect, exactly say why I do this, look into things sometimes, but Usually when I do, I find something that's not quite right. Just like there's just a desire to do it. Okay. The coming of the lawless one. Again, King James says, even him, which is better than the new king. I'm really disappointed in the new King James, which generally follows the King James as much as I can, because it's just a revision, uh, update of the King James, supposedly. In this particular chapter, they're really bad here. Uh, obviously, they have pre-existing beliefs, and they think they're clarifying things, but they're actually obscuring something that's very important. Because of the Greek language, uh, a definite article uh, in front of a, let me see, what here, uh, like the lawless one. Uh, it, uh, the, the a, a definite article in front of a uh, um, something can refer to a category. It can refer to an individual, like the lawless one is certainly a possible translation, but you have to look at what all of what Scripture teaches in order to find out how it should be translated, which depends on your knowledge of the Bible, how sound you are in understanding the Scripture, uh, and you, you're influenced by all kinds of things that are not correct. So uh, people that are dealing with the Bible, translating it, uh, they are, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. They can obscure truth that you should be able to see quite easily. So here that is uh, the one coming uh, uh, Again, even the New American Standard says the one. There is no word one there. It's a singular. But in the, in the Greek form there, it can be a category, a category of people, which is not a, a single category, which is, or you could say, you could say Adam, Adam. It, re, it often refers not to Adam alone, especially in the New Testament, but against, uh, but to all his descendants. To the flesh, sarks, that we get from him. 
That's a, that's a category of people. Those in Adam are a category. Those in Christ are another category. So he says, in Christ. It doesn't refer to one person necessarily. It doesn't refer to Christ the person necessarily. Sometimes it refers to everybody that belongs to him. And here the lawless, the lawless, the word one is not there, is in a form that can be a category of people. But there's something else that, show, that turned up in this particular verse. You see here where it says the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. I was thinking, lying. I was just wondering, there's something, I want to take a look at that. And so I did. I don't know why I wanted to take a look at it. See, the, the actual uh, Greek uh, is, it says here, uh, uh, according to the uh, the working, the energy, the, the the activity of Satan, of Satan, right here, sat Satana, 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 I guess is how you pronounce that. In all power, this isn't authority. This is power, dunamis, and. Uh, signs and portents, omens. So you have signs, Simeon, like the miracles of Jesus are signs, and this is portents, like the appearing of comets and blood moons and uh, these kind of things. Uh, evil portents. Animals, entrails, <laughs> But it doesn't say lying. See, the, the, there's a problem here. This word here. See, this is. These are plural nouns. In uh, well, here is. Let's see. That's a uh, power is singular, but uh, uh, the the signs and portents here are plural. Lying here is not a lie. It's not the word lying at all. It's not an adjective. It's a noun. It's a noun, a singular noun. Why they apply it to to uh, uh, lying portents? At make it apply to that word rather. It's an English problem here. It should have been translated more like the lie. Paul's a little choppy in his, his language anyway, so he'll often sort of throw something out there, inter, an interjection, in such a way, and I noticed this this morning, it's, uh, uh, if, you, if you've read Paul long enough, you sort of get a feel, especially if you, if you look at his, at his Greek. It's, 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 John is he's, he's much different than John. John is simpler. Like Paul goes on with long sentences. And throws all kinds of stuff in there. Uh, long, complicated sentences, which you can do in Greek, I guess. Uh, John is simple. Paul would definitely be scolded for run-on sentences uh, in English. But and when you break it up into sentences, that's a little... See, these long thoughts, this complex thought, and it's, it's sort of a, goes together, though, even though there's, there's no punctuation in the, the, the ancient Greek. So it's a... Uh, how you divide things up is sometimes a little difficult. But here we have this word lie, the noun lie, which I thought, wait a minute, this, this isn't, this isn't a, a, uh, an adjective that goes with um, portent or, or omen here, the wonder. Wonders is plural. This is singular. Not only that, it is not an adjective. It's a noun. It doesn't apply to that. And if this, if this whole thing, the other thing is about it, let's see. It's a genitive, and it could refer to this entire clause in all power and so, but what? 
if you take it as as a sort of a um, not an expletive, but a interjection, the lie. What is coming in all uh, the workings of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders? And, well, the, the scripture explains itself generally in the context. So I'm going to go back and we're going to continue with this here. So he says this, I just want you to keep in mind, lying, I don't think, goes with wonders. It goes with the whole th concept here. And with all, it's, and it's not an adjective. It's a noun. Well, there is a noun that we'll see. And with all, see, to, to, uh, unrighteous deception, ungodly deception, wicked deception, what is wrong rather than what is right, among those who perish, it's for those who are not of Christ. Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. The truth, the love of truth is necessary for salvation. If you love the law, you will not be saved. For this reason, if you love lies, in fact, those who loveth and maketh a lie, they are consigned to the lake of fire. Explicitly so in the book of Revelation politicians today especially i mean there, there's no love of truth in washington uh, maybe among a couple a few but not many they love lies and for some don't they, they they're, some of them are, are so seared in their conscience that they literally can't tell the difference between a lie and the truth just like uh post millennial uh post millennialism uh uh postmodernism there, there's a denial that there is such a thing as truth. Which is why you can have things, universities coming up with 100 plus genders. University professors promoting all this garbage. Why? Because they don't believe there's such a thing as truth. They're not, well, I, I don't even know if you talk about truth in physics anymore. Or math. A number of years ago, there was a professors came out, you cannot say that 2 plus 2 equal 4. Might not always be 4. Really? <laughs> see, see, they are, they've, they bought the lie of, of postmodernism that there is no truth. There is no God. So you can't, to, to say there is no truth is to say there is no God. Because God is truth. For this reason, God will send them strong delusion, a wandering away from the truth, that they should believe the lie. So let's take a look at that particular clause. And it's only a clause in a sentence. And it is the lie. Now, lie is a neuter word. So it's like here... He, he said, they, uh, before we saw lying wonders. Well, the word there is the same as here. A singular noun. It says here, again, this is in the same context. Paul is referring to believing the lie. Well, what is the lie? Well, this is Paul. Where, does he, where else does he talk about the lie? Romans chapter 1. Consider the parallels between what God has given them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie. What do we see in Romans chapter 1? Same writer. For the wrath, the anger of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, atheism, 
are uh, that's not quite the exact word, but the uh, uh, not not having any godliness, any uh, uh, any reverence, any piety, completely godless kind of stuff. It's like it's not just uh, ungodliness is doesn't really. It's impiety. It's it is uh, the total disregard for God. God is not part of the picture. And being godly is not part of the picture. And on righteousness, edikia, that, that is, uh, righteousness is justice. The same word. Uh, Catholic Bibles usually translate it justice. Righteousness and justice. What is right in the sight of God is what is just. What's in right in his sight, not in the sight of men, in the sight of God. Who suppress, so his wrath is revealed against this, the ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. And we know how much they love suppressing the truth nowadays. Uh, in the past uh, number of years, those who are the... Uh, gatekeepers of the information highway, people like Google, uh, YouTube, subsidiary of Google, Google Meta, which is Facebook, and uh, Twitter, which is now X. I haven't even looked at that in a long time. Um, these people have been blatant suppressors of even discussing truth especially in re regard to the uh, uh, to politics or, in particular, the pandemic. You're not allowed to talk about it. There is one accepted voice, and that's what we will promote, and that alone, even if they were partly responsible in creating the thing, perhaps. Dr. Fauci is God. You must listen to him, because he's got a lot to hide, perhaps. Yes, just like now, uh, you're not allowed to disagree with the CDC on YouTube. Not allowed. Not allowed. To, you, you must bow down and worship the CDC. That is what it is. Worshiping is, is accepting it without conditions. I mean, it's, it's, the CDC is your God. You must worship that God. We will not accept any other worship. If you love the truth and question the CDC, you're banned. So much for freedom of speech. So, as long as the government doesn't suppress your speech openly, it's okay. It's okay for corporate America to conspire to strip Americans of their constitutional rights which are given by God. According to the Declaration of Independence. So it's, it's okay to, to take away the Constitution and, that protects you. It's lawlessness. This protects all Americans, all, but the corporations can do it. Now, if you personally attempt to strip some other American of their civil liberties or their constitutional rights, that's considered a crime. But if Google, these transnational, multinational corporations that aren't American at all, they have no loyalty to America. They're multinational they're all over the world. If they conspire to strip you, with the government perhaps, to strip you of your rights, that's okay. And the government applauds, thank you, and probably sends them a check. Wow. What does that have to do with this? Everything? Suppress the truth. In unrighteousness, if you speak against what God calls an abomination, if you call an abomination what God calls it, uh, you're walking on really thin ice on social media.
you might get cancelled. If you work for a big corporation and you don't, if, if you disagree, if they have a, a mandatory meeting and they talk about having to accept the perversions that are being promoted in this world and you say, I, I disagree, I'm a Christian, God says that this is an abomination. Well, you just probably kissed your job goodbye. Fortunately, these things generally happen in the office sections. If you're simply somebody working on the bottling line, you're probably okay. Good reason not to seek high positions in this world. Good reason not to go to university. It's not doesn't help. It's not a good thing. It enslaves you. It doesn't result in... They promise you rewards and enslave you to debt and corporate politics and all kinds of evil things. The lust for power is a bad thing. Power, be sitting behind a desk and telling other people to do what to do. That, that's not a godly thing anyway. That's not godly. Wanting to be in charge of others is not godly. His wrath is being revealed. This is the word, the same word as apocalypse. Being ex publicly revealed. Made manifest against all ungodliness and unrighteousness to men who suppress the truth. This is their major sin. They suppress it. They seek to suppress the truth that is known to all. In unrighteousness. Hold it down. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them or among them, for God has shown it to them. So this is truth that they know. It's been revealed to them. For since the creation of the world, his, in, in, his invisible attributes, well, the word attributes isn't there, his, the invisible God, are clearly seen in that being understood by the things that are made. In other words, creation reveals that God exists and God is powerful. Even, spelled out right here, even his eternal power and his God, godness, his deity, the Godhead. That's that's actually a, a word that's his... Uh, I can't pronounce it properly. The out, the eight, I can't do it right. Oh, his divinity, his divine nature, okay, that his deity, that he is God. Uh, Godhead, we usually think of the Trinity, but uh, this, this is that he is God. There is a God, and he is the Creator. Okay. He created sexuality. He created marriage. He ordained these things. And to cast this stuff off with the encouragement and uh, the enforcement of government shows the entire culture is reprobate, given over to a reprobate mind. And it's not just America. Uh, some countries are trying to resist but the United States is trying to, will break their arms. The United States uh, and Biden, the Biden administration particularly, but it just didn't begin with them, is going around the country, or the world, especially like in, in uh, Southern Africa, uh, non-Islamic Africa, trying to force the, uh, the immorality that is currently being promoted in the United States by the powers that be on those countries. In other words, the United States is an explicitly now explicitly anti-Christian government whose mission is to destroy Christians, to destroy Christian belief, because they're not going after the Muslims. They're going after Christian Africa. And they're going after Christians in this country. 
The school system is weaponized by Satan. Getting your children ever younger into schools in order to form their minds in the way the world wants, in the way Satan wants. That's what's going on in public education and much of private education because they just follow the same pattern and have to basically conform themselves to it. But to form the minds of children that aren't even old enough to recognize something's being done to them. To, to establish, to root this, this culture of death. Satan hates humanity. This culture of death into the minds of young children. School teacher... Jesus warned you that if you cause one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, to lose their faith, it would be better for you that a millstone, a huge stone used for grinding wheat, were hung around your neck and you were cast into the depth of sea than to experience the punishment that will come your way because what you have done to little children, especially those who believe in Jesus. Do you hear that? Not my words, the words of Christ himself. And that goes for pastors and all kinds of teachers denominational leaders that are corrupting children through all kinds of ways with their vacation Bible school programs that are all about the world and the things of the world, and they're not about Christ. Star Wars, whatever the latest, latest Hollywood stuff is, we'll put that on. But we won't talk about Christ. Or he won't be the focus of our attention. It won't be him. If people will not come because of Jesus Christ, so be it. But if you try to attract them by something other than him, you are not his servants. If you use the world, incorporate the world into your lessons and your plans and your curriculum, you are of the world, and you're serving the devil. Corrupting children, exceedingly dangerous thing to do. You're basically a pedophile. Which will receive, well, they usually don't survive if they get imprisoned anyway. Even, even the, the criminals in prison take care of them. They administered God's justice in prison to those kind of people. They have more sense than the President of the United States, who is probably the biggest criminal in the country. The Biden crime family, with the Democratic crime family, you know, and the Republican crime family. Look at those monuments sometimes. If you've ever been to Washington, think. Where did you see something dedicated to Jesus Christ? Who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? And then ask yourself, is this really a Christian country? Or have I been lied to? What does the evidence suggest or proclaim? So here... The prop, why is God angry with this and reveals his wrath against them? Because they suppress the truth. Especially the truth that he exists. They suppress the truth that God exists that's revealed constantly by creation. Including our own existence. To everyone, whether they've ever seen a Bible, ever heard the gospel, they know God exists. That's what it's, Paul's writing here. He's proclaiming inspired the inspired word of god is declaring that 
that since the since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes or his his, his deity that he exists and his power are clearly seen. I, every time they put something in italics, they're adding something. So, and they're engaging in something I don't like: interpretation. And putting it in God's word. That's if you can get away with leaving it out, leave it out. Uh, they're going to be punished too. Dangerous thing to mess with God's word. Being understood by the things that are made, things he's created, even his eternal power and Godhead. They don't reveal God's nature fully. They reveal his existence and his power, but not his character, not his attributes of mercy and grace and love and truth. Of course, there's nothing in creation that's really a lie. So, I mean, the fact that things exist. If, it ex if God created it, 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 it has a real existence. Uh, Postmodernism denies that. Everything's in your head. Reality only exists in your head. Truth is personal. It's, it's relative to you. There is no absolute truth. That is a bald-faced lie. Hit them in the head with a rock to see if they disagree that that was uh, a true rock. Or just their imagination. Just tell me, oh, you just imagined I hit you with a rock. And that, that big lump on the side of your head is just psychosomatic. I'm not actually suggesting you do that. A Christian would not do that. But you could hypothetically suggest it to them, say, what if I hit you in the head with this rock? Do you believe the rock is not really there? It's just in your mind. Shall we, shall we have a, a little fact-based exercise here? Is it real or not? Is this rock real or not? <sighs> See if they persist and suggest, well, why don't you hit yourself in the head with a rock? And watch them choose not to do that. <laughs> so, so you believe the rock might be real. And because these are clearly seen, verse 20, so they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, knew about him, about his, through creation, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile, empty, vain in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. In other words, they did have light, the light of creation. Now, Paul, earlier in this chapter, talks, or maybe after this, talks about uh, a revelation of God's law that's in them that's commonly called natural law, where they have a uh, light that's given to them that gives them a knowledge of what's right and wrong, too. And they will display that by condemning in others what they themselves practice. They condemn themselves. They judge themselves uh, because of this. This is after this section here. And it's either in, uh, in chapter 2, I believe. But they, they, are, uh, they are subject to uh, God's judgment for that. With their own mouth, they condemn themselves. They realize they they confess when they condemn others for like stealing from them, when they themselves steal. They 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 show that they actually know it's wrong. Otherwise, they could not condemn others for doing it. Say it's it's right for them, but not for them. It's it's right for them, but not for those. That's you know. Prove that there is a knowledge of right and wrong that's given to them. And you have a conscience. Conscience might not always be right, but it uh, testifies to that you're doing something wrong. Usually after you've done it, generally, but there, there's a re these restraining things in us. I can remember as a uh, young man, uh, not Christian yet, that uh, the desire to be able to do th certain things, but I was being restrained. I, my, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. I wanted to do it. I just couldn't do it. Uh, sinful things. Uh, it just there was a restraint that I wanted to get rid of. 
part of that restraint was the conscience. I wanted to get rid of it. It was inhibiting me. And of course, nowadays, that's a bad thing. To be inhibited is a bad thing. No, it's God-given. But that was, that was sin in me, the sin of the flesh. That's all I was. And God has put restraint there. And when people cast all that off, like today, when society casts it off and everything else, and everybody's uninhibited, they, they, think they freely uh, practice what the flesh practices, the works of the flesh, without restraint. Well, it's becoming a really bad place. And human beings... The flesh unrestrained with the power of human beings will destroy everything. Climate change is not a danger. Sinful man is a danger. Unthankfulness and, and not giving, not recognizing God's place, not giving, not glorif not regarding God as important to glorify. Uh, in the Old Testament, the, the word refers to the weightiness of God, the, the importance of God. So basically, God is nothing. God's not important. For many so-called Christians, God's not important. He's Sunday morning. We do it because of tradition. We do it because we've got a family, yada, yada, yada. But they don't love God. They don't know God. They don't regard him as, as really important in their lives. You can see that all the time. And nowadays, that is the dominant thing in American society. God is essentially forgotten. He's certainly not a part of daily life. Even of people that claim some religion, that it is uh, not central to their lives. Whereas God ought to be central, should he not? Should not God be centered in our lives? Doesn't everything orbit around God, so to speak? If he created all things, if he is God, he has to be the most important being or thing, thing there is. Otherwise, he's not God. But what happens is, with Adam, with fallen Adam, you have a person, they're self-centered, so everything has to rot orbit around them. It's how does it affect them? Is it good for me or is it bad for me? Not if it's what God says. And if I want something that God says no, I don't like it as a son of Adam. I don't want God's will. I want my will done. That's Satanism. Do what thou wilt. Forget God. Forget society. Forget law. Do what thou wilt. That's what Satan did. That's a rebellion of Satan. I will ascend above the stars of God, the stars of heaven. I will be like the Most High God. My will. Sin of Adam. I know what God said. I know God exists. But I'm not going to do what he said. I'm going to choose my own path. He exalted himself over God. And we see the consequences constantly, including in our own lives. Born children into this world as children of Adam, children of the flesh, children of disobedience. All terms the Bible uses. Okay, and the result of this, ongoingly, the ongoing revelation of God's wrath is that because they knew about God, because they know he exists, but they choose to put him out of their minds, they, they, uh, they're foolish, they become empty in their thinking, their, their thoughts are vain, and their foolish hearts were darkened. It's a fool, the fool, according to Proverbs, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. So what is the lie here? That there is no God. God's not important. God's nothing. It's all about me. Professing to be wise. Professors. They became fools 
and, ex and change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. In other words, created idols, gods for themselves, that were not God like God at all. See, an, an idol, a, a thing, a stone, a piece of wood, uh, a software program, uh, AI, can never be like God. An image can never represent the living God. It doesn't matter what it's an image of. You create an image of God. It's not God. And it's not like God. It's dead. Made into an image like corruptible man. Man was corrupted. And birds, say even less than that, birds and four-footed things, animals, and creeping things, worshiping golden calves. Crocodiles. Snakes. Therefore, because of this, they darkened their own hearts because they rejected the light. And because of this, God gave them up to uncleanness. In other words, God turned them over to the consequences of their own rejection of truth and of light. The truth that they already knew. They are not subject to God's anger because of ignorance, but because of the rejection of truth. in the lusts of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies. Our bodies are supposed to be temples of God. To dishonor their bodies. All these people covered with tattoos. They graffiti their own body. Mutilate their own body. These people, there a few years ago, I don't know what it is today, there was these, especially girls, cutting themselves. Anorexia. Why? Because they have rejected God and his truth. For other gods. Many Christians worship a God that's not the God of the Bible. Because they've rejected God's own revelation. They worship a God the way they want God to be. A false image of God. Often made, uh, projected out of their own desires. In the image of fallen man. Their ideas of love and grace and everything else are utter corruptions of the true God. Gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts, the desires of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves. So what do we see here is a consequence as part of God's wrath on those who reject the truth as God gives them over. Uh, they, you won't honor me. I'll make sure you, I'll remove my honor from you. I'm taking my honor back. You're supposed to be my image. Your body is supposed to be my temple. Go ahead, defile my body. I don't live there anymore. Defile my temple. I don't want it to appear to be my temple because it's a lie. Because I'm not there. You don't pay attention to me. Okay? I'll give you up. I'll divorce you. Do what you want. See what, that, what happens. So God gave them up. To dishonor their bodies. Who exchanged the truth of God for, for the lie. The lie. And worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator. Created things. Rather than God. Who is blessed forever. Amen. God is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions. Passions are uh, strong emotions that move you to do things. For even their women exchange the natural use for that which is against nature. Lesbianism. 
the natural use of sexuality, what we're created with as human beings uh, as part of the gift of God and for, the, for intimacy among ourselves in, in marriage and for, uh, it, it, for the union of the man and the woman in marriage and also for procreation. Only that can bring life. Only that act can bring life, physical life. We have the privilege of propagating, hopefully, the children of God in a way. But it was corrupted. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, proper God-ordained sexuality, burned in their lust one for another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. Yes, Consider things like AIDS, which used to be called, what was it, a gay-related immune deficiency syndrome or something like that, GRID. Originally it was called GRID. I remember during that was during the, uh, the Reagan years when that showed up. And it probably was a result, they suspect, of uh, uh, bestiality, human beings having sexual intercourse with monkeys. Well, there's a way to make a virus go from one species to another. Uh, something else God calls an abomination. Those that practice th those things are to be put to death. There's a reason for those commandments. Besides, to, to join what is supposed to be the temple of God, your body, to an animal? Now it's machines. See, here it's just man on man and woman on woman. We're way beyond that. We're beyond Sodom and Gomorrah in this country and in the West, not just the United States, Canada, all over the place. Only a few countries are resisting. And like I said, the, the, the current administration is trying to twist their arms to do everything it can to force Christian, uh, semi-Christian countries to embrace this Satanism. This is true Satanism. The exaltation of self-will. That's the man of sin. What does he do? He exalts himself over everything that is called God and every object of devotion. No, it's me. I don't care about any of that. It's my will. That is the man of sin. That is the man of lawlessness. All who practice those things. All the children of Adam, without restraint, do that. As Adam did. He exalted himself over the will of God. Even though he knew God had walked with God, was created personally by God. He rejected him for his own will to follow the, the, the serpent, the dragon. <sighs> it gets worse. This is God's ongoing wrath on people that reject the truth. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, they didn't even like to retain the idea that God exists. Why? Because that bothers me. Because that means if he exists, I might be accountable to him. They want to get rid of that. They want to destroy the Ten Commandments. They want to eliminate all knowledge of God because they hate him. Because he does exist. And they know it. They're just fooling themselves. God gave them over to a debased mind. King James says reprobate. Not working a mind that does not work right. To do those things which are not fitting. But King James says convenient. But that's same meaning. What is not proper and fitting for human beings to do. 
It's unfit for animals to do. Being filled with, now see, this is beyond just physical here. So we got these, we got right back to the works of the flesh. Being filled with all unrighteousness, injustice. Black Lives Matter, utterly un, unjust, unjust. It was not about justice, never was. It's like all, all these movements, reparation movements. It's not about justice. It's about the love of money. And the hatred, about racism, hatred for others. Blaming others for things they did not do. That is unjust. I'm guilty because I have pale skin and even paler hair. Well, actually, I have that in common with a lot of people with a dark skin. So it's only the skin. Even paler in the winter. That makes me guilty. Even though my ancestors were not even in this country when slavery was legal here, in part of the country. It was never legal in all the country. It wasn't just the South. Let's remember, it, the North, too. It's ridiculous. Can you imagine putting a person on trial? And uh, for the sins of their ancestor? Actually, the Constitution has something about that. It's called blood libel. You cannot punish a person for something they did not do. That because their, their, their father or their grandfather did something, you cannot punish them for that his crime. Well, my ancestors weren't even in this country. My grandfather, on my father's side, came over in, like, 1918, 1919, something like that. He probably had never seen a black man until he got to the United States. He did have some racist attitude, but... And it was wrong. Part of it was based on experience. But nevertheless, it's wrong. It was a wrong, sinful attitude. Nevertheless, pale-skinned people aren't the only ones that have wrong, sinful attitudes toward others. And Christians, even if our flesh has that, we recognize it and rebuke it. If we see that attitude rising up in us, we immediately rebuke it. Say, I'm not that. God, get this out of me. It comes from the flesh. Even born-again Christians still have the flesh. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, get rid of God. So what is the lie? There is no God. That's, they're lying to themselves. They know better, but they still keep telling themselves there's no God. God's not important. God doesn't care. If God exists, he's not part of my life. Well, guess what? He exists. Your life depends on him entirely. God gave them over to a debased, non-functioning, non-working mind to do things which are not fitting for human beings to do. Not fitting for, inappropriate for his created order. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality. This is pornea again, the catch-all basket phrase, I'm sure. Uh, yes, of course, pornea. All sexual immorality comes under that, including adultery, homosexuality, uh, um, a fornication, uh, illicit premarital sex, all these things. Uh, uh, pornogra uh, pornography, sensual, uh, all these things are X-rated movies, that kind of stuff. All misuse of what God created that was good, human beings turn it into evil. Pervert it. Pervert the goodness of God's creation for evil. That's what happens when you're without God and you reject the light God gives you. Wickedness, 
covetousness, maliciousness. Donald Trump, malicious. Doesn't forgive, I get even. That's maliciousness. Donald Trump is no Christian. Unless he comes out and publicly repents and confesses Christ, there's serious problems with Donald Trump. But it's the, the problem is we always get a choice between two choices of Satan. He chooses both. He, he determines who's going to be candidates, and we get to pick one. Wow. And, of course, he's working in, in the voters, too. So that's why you end up with Donald Trump and then Joe Biden. And before that, Barack Obama, another disaster. And George W., another disaster. Every single president has been a disaster. None of them are of God. Not a single one of them has ever been a godly man. It's like there's not a single born-again Christian on the Supreme Court. Never has been. Satan chooses who gets on the court. The rest of it is just a shell game. It's just a deception. It's like the, the uh, satanic temple. It's just a front to, to distract you from Satan's real temples, like the Capitol building, the Congress, the Senate, the President. This is where his power is, and he controls them. These people are his puppets. They're wicked. God is not central in their lives. Power is. Money is. Themselves are central. It's only when you're born again is that problem of absolute self-centeredness removed. Oh, we can disguise our self-centeredness, but it's there. Only when Christ comes in you are you restored to a proper relationship with God. Where you're not the center anymore, but God is. Well, we still love that flesh, but it's there is in the new creation there is a proper relationship with God. They are full of envy. I mean, this is celebrated on entertainment. All these things are celebrated on entertainment. They turn the most wicked of crimes into entertainment for the public. We go way beyond the Roman Colosseum. Murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, tale-bearers, rumor-mongers, backbiters, haters of God, or hateful to God. It can be translated either way. Violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents. This is... How many parents think it's cute when their two-year-old is, or three-year-old or 15-year-old is manifestly disobedient to them? It's a manifestation of the flesh. It's wickedness to God. Undiscerning. They don't understand. They don't, they don't look and see. They can't understand the signs of the time because their vision is full of themselves and their own desires. They don't care about God and what God wants, and what God's doing. They don't care. Untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. Again, unforgiving. Donald Trump was asked if he forgives people. No, I get even. He's not a Christian. Do not be deceived. He is as much a servant of Satan as the rest. Again, Satan gives multiple choices. He controls this world. He is the God of this age. The children of Adam are his slaves. 
He tells them they're free, but it's a lie. Who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but approve of those who practice them. Just like now, it is society and government and the big corporations and the whole lot that is approving of wickedness, casting off the restraints of God and approving of wickedness. Finished. 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 Judgment's coming, and they're doing this in the very under the very gaze of the judge. Coming into the court and giving God the middle finger. Giving Christ the middle finger. Christ, who is salvation, who is our only salvation, rejecting him, despising him, insulting him, and seeking to destroy him and his people. So much so that when he returns, they will gather their armies together and try to, to stop him. That shows what kind of a mind they're given over to. That in spite of these things, that they know better, they reject the, the, the light and what's good and proper and wallow in evil. Like a, like a hog wallowing in the mire, in the mud. These people wallow in evil. Just, just roll in it and love it. They're filthy and they love being filthy. It's humanity. That's being exposed right before our eyes. The wickedness of fallen human beings being exposed. Fallen humanity. The wickedness of Adam. The results of the fall put on public display. This is a public trial, brothers and sisters. The judgment of God, the judgment of the court of Christ. This is a public trial. This is the presentation of evidence against the enemies of God. Right now, going on. Biden and everyone that exalts themselves over the will of God is showing what they are and being displayed openly. This is all being recorded. You're on camera. And when the judge takes his seat, you will stand before him, and here's the evidence. You presented the evidence yourself. That's what's going on. And one of the really damning things is when the children of disobedience try to destroy the children of God. Like the, the government education department's doing now, trying to, to destroy God's children. Those that love God, trying to destroy them. They hate God. And they hate his children. As Jesus said, if the world hated me, it will hate you. They crucified him, the Son of God, the Savior. They crucified him. And many of those responsible, like the high priest, knew who he was. They knew he was from God. They saw the miracles. The response was, uh, this might ruin our position. we got to get rid of this guy. The Romans might come and take away our position. Because they put us in power. The high priest. They, they, they chose the high priest. Had to be acceptable to the Romans, to the Romans. So they might come and decide that that we're this is getting a little beyond there. It's like talking about God's kingdom rather than, than Caesar's kingdom. They might come and take us out of power, fire us. So we gotta kill this guy. They were murderers. In their hearts, they were murderers just like Judas Iscariot was a traitor, a lover of money, and a thief. That's what's going on in this world. That's why things are going right now. The, the restraints have been removed. They've cast off restraints. They're doing this to themselves. Before our eyes and before God's eyes. All of heaven is a witness to these things. 
This is public. The public war against God. And the United States has a central place in that war on Satan's side, trying to force wickedness on the world. Judgment is coming. Judgment's already here but it will intensify. Like evil, it will be exposed more and more openly. 